A while back, we made this sick video about creating Hollywood stunts. Yeah, Tom, nice angle, dude. Way to hang it up. <laughs> That's how we talk to each other. In that video, we talked about how stunt drivers do their job, but we never actually covered how stunt drivers got their job. I mean, if starting today, I wanted to dedicate my life to becoming a stunt driver, where would I start? How long would it take? And could someone like me, a, a, a total novice with almost no connections, actually be able to break into the industry? To gain some insight, we talked to these guys, professional drivers Dan Brockett and Tanner Faust. They've worked on TV shows like Better Call Saul and films like Need for Speed and Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. And of course, some videos on this very channel. They were generous enough to share their stories of breaking into the industry. And honestly, it's given me hope. Stunt people are badasses. They can take punches, they light themselves on fire, they jump out of buildings, and they can drive pretty dang well too. So if you wanna get hired as a stunt driver, you have to be better at driving than those people are. And nowadays, it's harder than ever. Obviously, there are a bunch of different skills and qualities required to become a professional stunt driver. But before we get to those, let's talk about the way most stunt drivers break into the industry in the first place. My first movie was Dukes of Hazard. I'd been racing for about seven years. Club racing, rally racing, and um, drifting. But it just happened to be that the director who was doing Dukes of Hazard was doing a rally race. So he wanted rally racers to drive the cars. You do get a little bit of a side door in if you have a motorsports background or you have a car control background because it is exceptionally difficult for traditional stunt people who have all the contacts. It's very difficult for them to get to be experts at it. So having some racing background obviously helps, but is there any other way? The most common by far is by family introduction into the industry. One of the reasons is because of your parents. And the second reason is because you start off with the stunt mentality of training, literally three-year-olds. Stunt people that can jump off of buildings, light themselves on fire, are martial arts experts, and can skydive off of buildings and stuff. Um, they have been training since they were three years old or two years old. Now, before you get all worked up about how unfair this is, let me remind you that this is nothing new or unique. Think about the NFL with the Mannings and the Hasselbacks, or Hollywood with the Hemingsworths and the Culkins out there, or the Hanks. Shout out to Chet Hanks, greatest rapper alive. So what if you don't have any family connections and only a small amount of racing experience? Something like a couple of seasons in Formula Drift, perhaps. It's not like you could just be on set one day working as an extra and all of a sudden the director is like, hey, can you drive stick? And next thing you know, you're a professional driver. Oh wait, that's exactly what happened to our friend Dan Brockett. Signed up for my first season of Formula Drift and it's way more expensive than I thought. So to pay the bills and the in-betweens, I responded to a Craigslist ad asking for extras to be on this show called Manhattan. They're filming a scene where I'm sitting in the back of a World War II Jeep. They flew in an actor from LA. He's out there, he was rehearsing his lines all the time. And he was like, dude, I don't know how to drive a manual. And I was like, it's easy. Just think of it like a seesaw. You're balancing the clutch with the gas pedal. He was like, oh, cool. Yeah, I can do that. Like, well, action, the guy yeah. stalls. Cut. The director's yelling at this poor actor, like, dude, and one of the hair makeup ladies was like, well, let him do it. He's a professional driver. Like, cause I told her I was doing formula drift and the stunt coordinator comes over and pulls me aside. And he's like, well, what's your background? And I gave him my little spiel and he was like, all right, cool. You're in, do not <laughs> this up. I go up the hill, hit the mark. The dude delivers his lines. We all drive off. The stunt coordinator pulled me aside again. And he was like, good job. Uh, if we come back next season, I want you to be in one of the vehicles all the time. Now, at this point in time, he is only what the union refers to as a vehicle driver, not as a stunt driver. And I think it's important to know the difference. Vehicle drivers are like an extra who gets to drive a car. A stunt driver is more, well, it's all of this stuff. But Dan did eventually work his way up. 
Uh, end of the season two rolls around. He says, you did a fantastic job. You didn't kill anybody. You didn't hit any cameras. You didn't hit any actors. He calls me nine months later and he's like, I got you three days to be on a movie called Just Getting Started with Morgan Freeman and Tommy Lee Jones. Three days is basically what you need to become eligible for Screen Actors Guild. Three days on set as a specialist for something. That's what's called a tart, tart taffly? Tart halfly? Tart taffly. Taft Hartley which is a voucher um, to join the union, the Screen Actors Guild Union, and uh, get your SAG card. And that makes you eligible to do future jobs. I cannot tell you how lucky I got with that happening. This is mind blowing. Dan's career as a stunt driver started as him just being an extra, making some side cash. I mean, it's clear that luck definitely plays a role in this career path. So let's say you managed to do it. You went from background extra to precision driver to stunt driver, or one of the many other paths have landed you with your first call to set. Now what? How do you turn that one day of work into a career? The first and most important tip, just be a nice person and be around. How well can you get along with people? How well can you follow directions? Um, because there are guys that are really good at what they do, but they don't with anybody else on set or the coordinator or the other stunt people and they never work again. Getting along with everybody is the biggest part of the job. If people don't like hanging out with you when when they call a rap or even on set, then you know you just gotta be likable, friendly, and have a good attitude and understand that you're really lucky to be there. Second, no matter how skilled you are, be ready to face a ton of pressure and constantly be pushed outside of your comfort zone. Most drift guys are like, dude, I could totally be a stunt driver. I am really good at drifting and and I can, I'm a badass behind the wheel. Put him in a Toyota Camry with no hydraulic e-brake, with no 800 horsepower, will they still be able to perform the exact same thing that they want you to do? at half the speed with 1 16th the car. You know, sliding a car is nothing new, but doing it with precision and having one or two cars to work with for a whole movie that are really set up right is, is tricky. Sometimes the director will be like, we need you to do this reverse 180 in this parking garage, but you're gonna be leaned over to the side and ducked below, so you can't see anything. So then you have to do the whole stunt blind off of a count in your head, 1001, 1002, 1003, and do your stunt and hope that it works. But what really surprised me when we talked to Tanner is that safety is your own responsibility. You know, when you get in a race car, there's a rule book that says how safe your stuff has to be. You get in a car, you're like, okay, is that, is that what you're gonna wear? You got a belt? And you bring your own belt, actually. A lot of people don't know stuff guys bring their own belts. Sometimes you can wear a helmet. I mean, if it's a really bad one, they'll make sure that, that your head is not gonna ruin the shot. I mean, the way they used to do it, when they rolled a car is they literally had a strap connected to the other side of the car. And when the car started going over, they just wrapped their arm around this rope over here and just grabbed it and pulled themselves down into the seat. But it's, it's responsibility. It's called taking responsibility of your own life. And finally, expand your skills, never stop learning, and make yourself valuable. Be really good at something and have something to offer. That's, that's the bottom line. Realize that you're, 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 you need to be a sponge on set. And just like your attitude as a racer, to always be learning something but then people will take you under their wing and they and they love that energy and they'll um you know build you up and help you stay in the, in the industry so it's a lot of people just listening not really talking about themselves but just listening to what other people have to teach them so let's recap here with a quick checklist of what it takes to become a professional stunt driver you need to be expert level skilled at driving have access to cars and tracks for training you gotta be a fun and likable person have balls of absolute steel understand the ins and outs of film production and work under pressure. Freaking go for it, follow your dreams. If they can do it, guess what? They're human too, just like you, so do it. Big thank you again to Dan Brockett and Tanner Faust for helping us make this video. Uh, could not have done this without them. Thank you very much, guys. Follow Dan Brockett at Officer Dan. Follow Tanner at Tanner Faust. Be kind, I'll see you next time.